Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Friday. Okay, in one week, we have literally, it's been so crazy. This has just been a whirlwind. And this month alone, and last month, this month, it's family in and out. It's so many people, like our house is a revolving door. We have to move again we're moving again we like i went to la and then now to charleston and then came back home and then back to charleston we just got back from charleston last night we went to madison lacroix's event uh which was so much fun and honestly so proud of just what a boss like to see i love seeing people just like doing whatever they want to do as far as like business and trying and if you know like i'm one of those people that if it doesn't work out for me i'm gonna keep trying and you know it's it's inspiring to see, but yeah, cat's out of the bag because it's on Instagram, but we are moving. So here we go again, and we will be taking you guys on that journey. It's going to be in a couple of months and um, I'll keep you guys posted. But right now we're back to talk about the real housewives of Salt Lake city. Monica Garcia is opening up about producers. Here we go. Okay, so where do I begin? Mm, here. This is where I'm going to begin. Now, thank you to Reality Blurb. Um, I just thought that this was a really, really good... I mean, it was an interesting... Let's get to it. Andy Cohen revealed the reason for Monica's cooling off period from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Meanwhile, a network executive claimed that Monica perhaps told the truth that she tipped off production to her Reality Bontese page. Okay. During the final episode, the reunion episode, Heather Gay obviously shouted incessantly that Monica was untrustworthy, but in the same episode, Heather admitted that she covered for Jen Shaw. Right. For three years. Heather also falsely suggested that a producer may have given her a black eye. I did a poll asking you guys if you think that Heather Gay should also be fired for that because I just thought like, Nothing against Heather Gay. I don't have a vendetta or anything like, you know, it's nothing like that. But you're a very successful woman, a businesswoman who's making well over six figures to film a show with your friends, to go to lunches and dinners and put yourself out there. Yes, but the fame also helps your businesses. You have so much going for you. So to falsely accuse with a whole investigation, somebody who is making not even a quarter of what you make that could potentially put their jobs in jeopardy, I think is probably one of the most disgusting things that you can do. It's like the boy who cried wolf. And I don't think that somebody like that who is capable of doing that is somebody who I would trust. I just don't. And that's my opinion. That's my opinion. So the news is out there that we are going to have a cooling off period with Monica is what Andy said on this radio show. I think the reunion is the chance to come out, say, why you did what you did on this season, it's the Supreme Court of Public Opinion. I don't think she successfully swayed any of her co-stars to her side. Hmm. They all expressed that they very much did not trust her, which is a difficult way for her. Basically, what I was also asking is, is there a path forward for you and Monica? And the answer was no all the way around. So because of this, Andy, who had discussed the issue uh, a lot, they decided it was best to let this one breathe for a while. He also hinted that we'll see if Monica builds inroads off camera with her co-stars. So around the same time, it was NBC Universal exec Noah Sampton who claimed that Monica perhaps told the truth about her Reality Montes account, which this part is throwing me off a little bit because if she did actually tell producers, it, it just makes so much sense because if you guys don't know, this is how... it they pretty much do it is they storyboard these things before they, you know, start filming and they call and like what they ask different cast members. What do you have going on? Who are you friends with? Who are you not friends with? What do you think the season looks like? It's a TV show. They have to make ratings. This is how it works. Um, yeah. So if they knew that she was running with other people, this reality of Antis account, it would have made for the perfect storm of a final episode, the finale, which is one of the most important episodes of the franchise. Back to it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In terms of Monica talking to a producer about it, at some point during casting, I don't know. There's various producers, casting producers, that somebody might meet during the process. 
is what Noah said. Maybe there was a conversation that was never relayed to anybody. I don't honestly know what that story was. All right. Well, we're going to share with you what Andy had to say. Here we go. I love a good moment. Look, the big question for since the reality Von T's reveal has been, will you keep Monica on the show? And the news is out that um, we are going to have a cooling off period. Okay. Uh, I think, mean? well, here's the thing. I said, I think the reunion is the chance to come out, say why you did what you did on the season. It's the great, it's the Supreme Court of public opinion. Mm, true. And mm. so Monica, I think, had the opportunity not only to explain herself to the audience, but way more importantly, in this case, to um, the other women. And I don't think she successfully swayed any of them to her side. She didn't. And at the end, I really went around because I was thinking, okay, well, let's hear it from them all right now. Where do you stand with her? And they all expressed that they very much did not trust her, yeah. which is sure a hard. difficult way for her. Basically, it was what I was also asking is, is there a path forward for you and Monica? And the answer was no all the way around. So I think that it's best the, you know, we all discussed it ad nauseum that it, it would be best to kind of let this one breathe for a while. Uh, she's obviously really compelling television. Maybe she'll be able to build some inroads with some of the women on her own right. off camera. I can see that. And, you know, we'll see if that happens. But well, and aside from the reality of on T stuff, and of course, I haven't seen this latest episode. But uh, she did get her story out. You know, this story about her and her mom, I think, probably helped a lot of people recognize certain behaviors in their own lives. Like it, it is she did get her story out in a lot of ways. Well, I thought that that was really a way to root for her. Right. When, and she same. told it in a way I was certainly sitting there yeah. rooting for her thinking, wow, we all know the phrase hurt people hurt people. That's exactly right. And that's a really good example of it. If you look at her uh, relationship with her mom and then how she is with. Okay. I mean, honestly, I think that this makes a lot of sense. Um, the way that they're explaining it. And I, to me, it pretty much screams that the door is not closed. The door is closed. As Nini would say, it seems like if Monica can forge a path forward with these women, or at least some of these women, who knows what's going to happen? He did call her compelling TV. I'm just curious as to how this is going to play out and if they're going to ask her back halfway through the season, which I kind of feel like they are. But my question for you is, do you think, after all of this has been said by Andy, do you think that there will be any sort of forging this path back in? Or do you think that the door is closed? All you have to do is go over here to anywhere you get your podcast. Go to Up and Adam. Enter to win our free blue mean that we are giving away. And just scroll down, leave five stars, and let us know. Answer the question that I just asked you. I think that um, it's a fair question. That's it. It's a fair question. Smash that like button, show some love, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.